Okay, it is day three. We're headed from Arkansas, Van Buren to Bowling Green, Kentucky. It's gonna be not as long a drive today as it normally was, but oh, it's gonna be fun. Headed to Camaro Fest, gonna get there, gonna get set up, get that car unloaded, and hopefully meet up with some people that are headed up there. So let's get this trip going. Well, this morning starting off swimmingly. I think what, we made it like four minutes down the highway <laughs> and uh, Ofer had another blowout. We don't know what happened. He parked off of the streets last night. Maybe he picked up a nail in the middle of a field. I don't know. Um, but he's having the year I had last year. The nice thing is he has two spares. I didn't have that, but now we're down to zero spares, so I'm not entirely sure what's happening. So we may have to stop to get one of or both fixed. So he's driving with spares again or we're gonna go kamikaze and see what happens and just get up. I don't know what's going on. So unfortunately, we missed the exit, so they're back there fixing it right now. Um, they got off the freeway and we're sitting on the side of the freeway right now waiting for them to uh, roll up on us so we can get going again and see what our next steps are. So I'll be back with an update as always, because you know, daily video vlog. I'm not used to doing these. It's so weird transition. What a morning. So we're about two hours in on our journey today, uh, making good progress already. And um, yeah, first gas stop. And we're waiting on this guy, which he looks like he's done. We'll see if he's learning how to read. He's, yes. But the cool thing is we have seen a couple Camaros cruising up. I know a lot of people are headed up the same way we are right now to get to Camaro Fest. And a lot of people will arrive tonight um, and the rest of the people will arrive the next day, so. Oh, it's really hot out there. Well, muggy, it's not hot, it is humid and that's causing lots of sweat and uncomfortableness. Um, but as we're driving, so this trailer's old. It's like 20 years old. And it's had its problems, it's had its ups, it's had its downs. One of the fenders, the back side of it has a aluminum plate that has been re-welded into place. And I'm just gonna say booger welded. And all of the welds except for one basically had shaken free and the whole thing had, you know, it sits like this and it was basically sitting like this because the weld on that side was still holding but it was shaking back and forth and rubbing on the tires. And I was getting really nervous with the way that looks. So we're like, hey, let's pull it off. That weld's gonna shake and break free. Regardless, it's better to have that broken free than worry about, God forbid, the metal, the aluminum bending getting caught in the tires and causing something catastrophic. So yeah, but in the process, so we pulled off the fender, pulled off the piece. It was super easy to come off because it was basically already off. And um, the other side of it was when I went to tighten the bolts back, the bolts are all rusted and old and not good bolts. So two of the bolts of the three, two being bolts with nuts, the other one being a wing nut, uh, two bolts broke. So I gotta keep an eye on it, make sure it's not shaking, that wing nut doesn't come free. Hopefully it holds enough uh, to get us up there. If not, um, we'll have to just keep an eye on it. Worst case scenario, we pull the fender completely off, throw it in the back of the truck and uh, risk tires throwing rocks on the car. Um, at this point, I would rather risk the fender vibrating off and pulling off and finding new bolts and nuts than uh, getting giant rock chips in my car. And that's it, that's all I got right now. Onward. taking a detour through a very small town. I have no idea what the speed limit is here. There's a sign way up there. Does it say 35 or 45? That one says 35. That one says 35 as well. 
So, from my understanding, I guess there was a fatality and a semi truck hit the bridge, and so they basically shut down the freeway because he moved the bridge when the semi truck hit it. And I guess that happened the other day, which is tragic and not good. Um, but we are now detoured in kind of a small little quaint town. Almost all the shops and everything are all buttoned up, closed up. It almost looks, yeah, that's an airfield over there. It's always funny, airports seem to be the last thing to shut up. <laughs> but it's beautiful out here, it's green, seems to be water everywhere. I know a lot of you guys probably be like, you never want to live in a small town like that. Like, I would totally want to live in a small town like this. The only downside to it is like having Camaro meets and stuff like that. If I have to drive like 300 miles to get to a city center where there's someone else with a Camaro. Um, but just living out in the country, doing your own thing, not being bothered, like, it's pretty nice. I don't know. How many of you guys live out in the country? I'd love to know. If you guys live like in rural areas or away from big city centers where it's literally small town, even like this, like shut up downtowns where there's only a couple stores open. I'd love to know what, what's life like out there. How do you like it? I mean, I have an idea. I have a couple friends that live in the, literally the middle of nowhere. Um, I don't know. I'd love to know what you guys do and think. I'm sure you guys being probably raised or living there forever, like want to get out because um, there's probably not a lot of opportunity, but I think with the online age and stuff, there's a lot of opportunity that I think most people didn't have before. So maybe I'm crazy, I don't know, let me know. Well, we're about 3.3 miles from getting back on the freeway. This has actually just been kind of a pleasant little drive right here. It's instead of just trees on the side of the highway, we're actually seeing some pretty epic old farm homes, homesteads, whatever you want to call them. Um, really makes me want to move in the country it does it really does and I know my wife and I we've been talking about getting property be able to do the lethal garage get animals and stuff like that like I grew up with cows I had horses come on which is I just haven't done chickens before chickens. Good. and then we can raise pigs and have bacon lethal bacon <laughs> lethal bacon would be good you guys want some lethal bacon <laughs> it'd be cool right now okay I'm crazy we have basically made it to Memphis. We're just on the outside. I love this bridge. It goes over the Mississippi River. Um, it's really cool. Now, last year we were cruising in the Suburban that had a moonroof. I don't have a moonroof this time. So I'm gonna attempt to get a view of this cool bridge because I think it looks awesome, but I'm gonna have to do it out the side window of the truck. Uh, so I apologize if this comes out bad. But if you've never been to Memphis, it's a cool city to pass through. It's very tight corners and everything if you go downtown. So what we're gonna end up doing, we're gonna actually gonna pass through Memphis and then on the outskirts find somewhere to eat and probably fill up on fuel. Again, we're not we don't need fuel right now, we're at half tank, but it's just fill up. That will get us the rest of the way. We're 274 miles away from Bowling Green, Kentucky, our final destination. Um, so yeah, that's it. Let's check out this bridge. Pretty certain this is the largest brass bass pro shot ever. The pyramid. That's like really shiny. Like that blinds people. What the heck? There you go. There's downtown Memphis. They don't really have that big of skyscrapers, but that's okay. And uh, yeah, now we're cruising through downtown. You want to stay a little? I think we're gonna go left here, I-40 East, coming up. And the freeways here are really tiny. For all of those in Memphis, let me know in the comments below. This truck is driving very slow. We 
We are two hours outside of Bowling Green and I think like 70-ish miles outside of Nashville, probably less. I don't know, I haven't seen a sign in a while. Uh, we're cruising though, making good time. We should get up there about 4.30. Uh, I don't think we have any more stops ahead of us. It's just straight shot there. Um, yeah, so it's going well. It's nice and green. Everything's green out here. Green, 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 green. Bowling green. It's funny though, because once you get up in Kentucky, there's no like trees lining the highways and stuff like that. So, uh oh. Oh, these lanes are getting really narrow. Okay. Got diverted off the freeway again for some reason. Who knows? Love ways. Always. Oh, takes us the right way. Oh, a bit late. <laughs> Downshifting truck. I love the brakes on this truck. Love them. They work. Thanks, Dodge. Uh, yeah, we're 90 miles outside of our destination. I think we're really close to Nashville. Uh, it says we're an hour and 26 minutes away, so still going. I just, I swear, this is the, the town of rain that falls on you and there's no clouds over you. <laughs> Seven rainstorms. Final one, we well, we don't know if it's the final one, but hit another one in uh, just outside of Nashville, headed towards Louisville. And uh, yeah, car and truck are soaked again. And we're trekking along. Trekking. So, looks like the rain, the rain has basically stopped now and the roads are actually drying. So that's good. I'm not throwing all sorts of nastiness all over my car anymore. Hopefully, uh, once again, Beadmaker may have saved the Camaro. We'll find out for sure once we stop. Um, but I know when I put the Beadmaker on and the last storm we went through, it just all blew off, which was awesome. So, hoping for that again. And we've made it. We're in Bowling Green. We're, we're, this is the convention center right in front of us. I'm gonna pull down to where normal trailer parking and whatnot is. Seems like there may be some office officers over here. Motorcycles. <laughs> we're here. Uh, we gotta go check in the hotel. Come back. We'll unload the car. I'll try to get some of that on video. And uh, yeah, we'll wrap up today's video and see what's going on so let's go do that cars unloaded i'm sweating like a beast now <laughs> in sport mode right now just warming up that sounds pretty good huh now let's go find parking after i kill the truck i forgot i forgot i had the truck running Oh, kill the truck, lock the doors, take my trash out. See, I picked up my trash. Hop in. <sighs> Back at the room, we had a couple ice cold drinks. It was nice. It was very nice. And uh, I could see my car. It's right down there. See? Oh, I, I cleaned her off, wrapped her up. Hopefully, she won't get filthy or wet or condensated. <laughs> I don't even know. Um, but we made it to Bowling Green. Tons of cars, tons of people already seen and shook hands with people I haven't seen since last year. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be a good time. So Guitar Maget and them are coming in tonight and uh, meeting up with them. So stay tuned for craziness, fun, and good times. So uh, thanks for checking out the content. Again, during uh, the event, I'll walk around, I'll show you everything at Camaro Fest. I will I will be drag racing the car. Uh, I'm not expecting great times. It's hot and humid out here, but and 
race our beach bend raceway is not really the best of tracks it's got a nice little hump i think on the right lane uh but yeah that's all i got so likes comments shares appreciate it guys thank you for checking out these videos and until next time guys hope to see you on the road